Sit rep, episode two, 80 degrees. Light drizzle outside. It is freaking hot. Welcome back to the Flash Performance Channel on episode two of my AC install with my Cooper and Hunter mini split system. Today is tear the walls out day because I'm going to hide all of my plumbing and all of my line sets and all of my electrical behind the walls. Now, the way I have this building set up is I have, it's a post frame building. There's a two by four on top of that and then a plywood sheet on top of that. And I've actually screwed all the plywood sheets to the wall for instances just like this where I need to take them down to be able to get behind them. So the plan is to take this set of plywood sheets out so I can get my line sets in. I'm going to cut the insulation out so I have a channel for my line sets to go in and then I'm going to run the line sets. I'm going to run the one in the office first, run that through the attic, drop that down. So let's get this party started because it is boiling in here. break from cutting holes in the wall for the line sets and move up into the office. Now, the office is not real big. It's about 20 by 10 and it's only about six and a half foot ceiling, so it's not a huge space. And this 9,000 BTU unit will be perfect for in this space for both heating and cooling so I can keep this area climate controlled separate from the rest of the shop. This way I can use the office and not have to air condition or heat the rest of the shop and save some money. It's kind of the whole point of having a mini split. Now I got a couple of challenges in this office because of the way the walls are set up. I didn't really anticipate putting in a mini split into this unit so I didn't think far enough ahead. And I will show you those challenges that I have to overcome as soon as I get the backing plate off. So we're going to take the, the backing plate off of the unit. There's a screw right here. We're going to take out. That's just for shipping. So we're going to take that unit here out. And that allows us to take the backing plate off. I'm going to set this guy to the side so I don't trip over it. Now that we have the backing plate, we can start measuring out where we're going to put it on the wall. So this is the area that I've decided to put it. And the reason I'm putting it here is my desk is going to be over on that wall. I'm going to have some shelving units over here, but it's kind of the most out of the way. It, when you get in this type of a box, it's really not out of the way. One of the things that we have to think about is we need six inches from the ceiling for the top of the unit. So we have to measure down six inches. Well, my challenge is that I have a two by four here and I have a two by four down here, but I have no support in between. So that's something that we have to think about. I need to have at least one screw and something strong enough to hold it up. The other challenge I have is right here is a six by six post for the pole building. So that pole, I can't go through that. So what I'm actually going to do is since I do have such a big gap here and I have to have this down six inches, I'm going to put the center mount of the bracket right on that six by six post. And that way I can run a big lag screw all the way through and that'll be the majority of my weight support. And then I can put the rest of the screws into drywall hangers, still giving me the six inches that I need above. And then I'm going to drill the hole for the line set through the drywall, through the foam, and go up. Once I go through the drywall, I'm going to go into the foam. I'm going to notch that foam out from the ceiling side. That way the line set can come through the attic, down through the foam, through my hole, 
and to my unit. Now I decided not to go outside because I would have to go outside down 12 to 14 feet around the corner and over to the main outside unit, the condenser. And I didn't want to do that because that's going to be a lot of line set, but also it's going to be a lot of covering outside. I didn't want to go to that expense. So I'm going to run that line set through the attic over and down through that channel we just cut. Now the drain line, I'm going to drill straight through the wall and that'll just drain out on the outside of the wall. So let's get this started. Now you'll see that I actually went ahead and just used the regular screws to drill holes in the wall. And that way I could level it and put all the holes in where I needed to. And now all I have to do is drill it out with a 7 seconds bit and use these drywall hangers and that will hold it to the wall until I can get that big screw in there. It's an easier way to try and get everything lined up than trying to do these one individually at a time. My next step is to secure it with one of these ginormous lag bolts. Uh, this one's about three inches long. I have longer ones, but this will get me through the drywall, through that gap, and right into that 6x6. Six six. So that'll be my security point. Now these are non-drilling units, so I should be able to go right through. And that will hold me right where I need to be. All right. Four drywall anchors, one big old lag screw, this unit is ready to go on the wall. I take that back, if one lag screw is good, well, two more should be better, right? So I'm gonna put those down here, still in line with my six by six, that way I have three points, and keep it from wanting to tilt or anything crazy. I mean, I got them, might as well put them in. And that's where she's gonna live and keeping me cool and keeping me warm. And that's one less thing that I gotta worry about because it's, it's freaking hot in here. All right, plumbing. Back to directions. Plumbing. It's gonna get messy. So I went to the attic and I have five inches of foam. I need to get two and a half inches of that foam kind of hoggered out so I could get to that hole. So I used a big old drill bit and just kind of stuck it down in there and ran around a little bit. And I was able to get that hole cleaned out enough that I can see from the ceiling, well, from the attic, down through that hole so now I can get my line set through there. I think what I'm going to do for my specific case is I'm going to go ahead and cut another hole just above this one to make that one a little bit longer. And the reason I'm doing that is because I'm going to come straight down and then I need to turn and then I need to turn again. And that's going to be pretty sharp on those tubes. So I'm going to kind of make that a gradual turn by having that hole a little bit bigger. This is all covered by the AC unit so it doesn't really matter. You're not going to see it. So I'm going to go ahead and make that hole a little bigger just because it makes my life easier, that's why. Our next step in the process is to put the 50 foot line set in. Now, whenever I talk to Cooper and Hunter, they specifically spec'd out this 50 foot line set to match this 9000 BTU air conditioner and heat pump. So this small heat pump can run a 1 quarter and 3 eighths line and you can see that this line set is insulated together. They are separated so if I need to cut those off I can. But we need to roll this out. So what we're going to do is we're going to go up into the attic. We're going to roll it out in the attic. Roll it all the way across where it's going to drop down over by the condenser unit and we're going to drop down over here by the AC unit itself and get everything tied in and hooked up. Okay, I want you to pick it up. Not, not too far, keep going a little bit more. Okay, we're gonna come down slowly. Come down. Hold up. 
Okay, keep coming. Perfect, whoa, right there. So I went ahead and hung the AC unit up here to see how long these lines needed to be before I bent them over. The big one needs to be 12 inches and the smaller one needs to be nine inches. So I need to cut back this insulation, that way I can get the bender on. So we're gonna go ahead and measure off 12 on both of them and a little more. And we're gonna take that and we're gonna cut that insulation off around it. I got my grease pencil that I had before. We're gonna mark 12. And I can't get this insulation past that end, so I'm actually going to cut that insulation down each one to be able to get those all the way off. Once I get those bent, then I can tape that back on there. All right, back to the grease pen, 12 inches. Mark, the other one is nine inches. And mark, now I know where I need my bends to be. So I picked this guy up on Amazon. I'll put a link in the description below. This just goes over the tube and gives us that nice bend that we want. So this is a multi-fit unit. And that gives us that nice 90 degree we needed. That was a small line, that was the quarter inch. This one is 3 8 so that's gonna be on the bigger one down here. Now that I got those nice 90s bent, put the insulation back on, and we're ready to bolt it down. Now that I have the lines bent on the left side, I have to do the condensation line on the right side. Now, on the condensation line, you want to make sure that, that goes downhill. So if you're going to run it with the AC lines, it still has to go downhill. Now, there are pumps available that you can run it into a little pump box and pump it uphill if you need to. I'm on the second story, so I'm about 12 foot up. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to drill through the siding of the barn. Now, on a pole barn like I'm going in, the siding is corrugated and you want to make sure you get it in the flat spot so you can put that cover on it and make it go down. So I just drilled a little bit bigger hole through my insulation. That way I could see where the flat spot is. Now I'm going to go ahead and drill through it and pop it out on the other side. I just put a hole in my building. Hope I can fix it. Our next step is the electrical. Now, a lot of times you can just go ahead and tape this right to your hoses as you're pushing them through. That way everything comes through together. I decided not to actually, I just totally forgot about it. So I have enough room that I can go ahead and slide that down through and it shouldn't be a problem. So I'm going to slide that down and pull it through from the other side and then I'll tape this all the way to that hose, all the way to the condenser unit. Corbin, uh, push it down on your right hand side. Just the end that I showed you, the one with the little tiny pins on it. Nice and slow. Good job, I got it. You come on down. Now's the time we're going to mount it up. I have the AC lines coming, I have the electrical, I have my drain all figured out. I am tight and level. So now we're gonna hang it up. I'm going to put a box underneath the edge of it to keep it kicked out so I can get all my lines hooked up and then I'll pull everything back up through the ceiling. Outside. Get that guy hanging. Right there, okay, put that the box under there. Now that I have it up on the wall, I got the condensation line hanging outside, I can get these lines hooked up and figure out the electrical. So now is the time to practice your yoga poses and work upside down, basically. Oh yeah, that's supposed to do it. Do you hear that? That's for me taking the cap off. Now it's supposed to do that. It's got nitrogen in it, so it keeps it pressurized and keeps the oil and everything where it's supposed to be. So 
don't freak out like I just did. I totally forgot about that. Make sure you let that bleed out before you pop that cap off or it'll go shooting like a rocket across the room. Hit your son in the face. All right, there's one. Uh, make sure you check your flares. Make sure that they're in good shape. Uh, make sure nothing happened in shipping. This and R are, of course, good. Now, one end spins and one end doesn't. Don't try and spin the one that doesn't. So now it's time to hook up the electrical, and the electrical runs underneath and comes up over here on the right side while you're staring at it. So we're going to run that up the back side, and that'll actually go right next to the condenser line. And then there's a clamp here, and then it goes into the one, two, three block that you see right up here at the top. Well, as you can see, trying to shove the wire up from that end just doesn't work. So I got a piece of 12 gauge electrical wire. This is leftover house wire, it's a solid core wire. So we're just gonna shove that guy down through there, bend her over so she doesn't fall away. And then we're gonna tape our electrical wire onto that. Now that we've got it taped on, we can go ahead and pull that guy through. We're just gonna guide it up there. Don't have to worry about the wires coming apart this way. Ooh, oh yes. Oh my, oh, oh, there, oh, oh, we're birthing a wire. There it is, good deal, okay. Now we got that through. Now, if we read the instructions, you'll see that there's a one, two, three block with a ground up here at the top. And according to the instructions, it goes brown, gray, nope, take that back, brown, black, gray, yellow, green. I don't, I don't have those color wires. So we're gonna make up our own. That's how we roll. And we're going to use green, because that's our, always your ground. And uh, we're gonna match the black up, and then we'll just make sure that the other two match when we get back to the condenser side. So I'm gonna write on my instructions what colors I put where. So let's get those hooked on. Now, if you put them wrong, You'll have the wrong pins on this end, and then you'll <laughs> you have to recrimp them. Uh, luckily, I got mine on there, right? So we're going to go ahead and put the green in the one that has the ground symbol on it. We'll see here. Number two was black, right, Corbin? Yeah. Yeah. So we'll put number two is black. We'll put number one as red. If this blows up, it's your fault, Corbin. You're supposed to write these down. And number three is white. Once you get all those in there, make sure that you put your strap back across to make sure that you don't stress your wires. Can you grab me that screw from over on the counter there? Yeah, birds. Uh, maybe not. Yeah, that looks right. Yep. Kick my camera, boy. Making people shake on the other side. Is green number four. Green is number four. Yep. All right, so red, black, white, green. Got it? Yeah. Don't forget that. All right, next, we're going to zippage tie everything together and tuck it up underneath the machine so we can put it back against the wall. There's a bracket down there, dummy. You gotta go around the bracket. That helps. Mental note for all your viewers, there's a bracket down there. Put your pipes on top of the bracket. Makes it go better, promise. bring it to the side just a little bit so I don't see the hole on either side and I can see that there we go up against the side and then you got your little electrical cover here make sure we put that guy back on make sure all your wires are in place and that's it we're done oh no we're not done <laughs> 
We gotta do that two more times and put a condenser outside. Holy cow. All right, one done. On to the next one. Thanks for joining me today. We got a lot accomplished on this episode. We got a lot of things done, but there's still a lot of work to do. So make sure you subscribe, like the channel. I'm Chad from Flash Performance. We'll see you on the next one.